Delete. 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 Oh. Oh, folks. Do not delete me. I'm the one, the only, I'm the undeletable. Hobo Tom. I'm here to talk about some pro wrestling. Thank you for watching the, the Hobo and his girlfriend wrestling show. Um, I'm still working on that whole girlfriend issue. Maybe we might have a guest one day. You can never quite tell. Um, I do apologize for this being a day late. Mainly because... Oh, I went up to Jacksonville yesterday. I broke curfew, snuck out of Daytona Beach. Got into Jacksonville. Didn't get back because I had to sneak out of Jacksonville because I think Jacksonville actually did impose a curfew. I think Jacksonville's curfews like weird. It's like like nine to eight, or is it? Yeah, like nine to eight. It's, a, it's some weird thing. I don't know. I, I, every everyone's doing something different. Oh, you guys are doing well out there in YouTube land. Um, let's see here for shout out, Salvador. You've earned that six count, sir. You won twice. Uh, we were talking about stuff that pertain to AEW. Oh, wow. Too much. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe I'm on a normal schedule and it should be bedtime. Who knows? But I'm here to talk about some AEW. The theater of the delete, 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 delete. Oh, I just broke my camera too doesn't like way too much motion so this is gonna be pretty funky i know a couple of people say oh your 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 stuff so hoboish i'm like yep my equipment's pretty hoboish too i think my i do have to delete i do have to delete stuff too so let's start off with aew the theater of delete and the return of triple mania or at least triple a wrestling uh, so we start off with Cody Rhodes versus Jimmy Havoc. It was, was kind of like the same entrance. Uh, Cody was up at the announce booth with 
Kenny Omega and Tony Schiavone. There was no Jim Ross. Oh, this show felt so much better without Jim Ross. Oh, this show felt kind of long. Because uh, when I watched it, for what? Uh, and the weird thing is they had no one ringside either. I miss that. And no JR might be a better thing. JR. But um, backstage, they, every show often they would show pictures of the backstage. There are people backstage. I'll tell you what, folks. I should have done the truly a hobo thing. Since I was up in Jacksonville, I should have snuck into the Daily Center. Got some bootleg videos. But no. I think that would probably be pretty bad. I oh, wonder you would be sad for you, though. Now everyone's... I know arenas are like... People like... Who work the concession stands at arenas, they're like freaking out. Like, this is like their pay. Uh, the government, I think, voted to give... I think one last news thing. The government did vote to give people, I think, 1200 for this whole coronavirus thing. I have to figure out how to do that. I'm up in the air if I should look for jobs or just take my unemployment for a while. I don't know. We'll see. Because, again, when I get the $1,200 check, I'll, I'll say something great. But until I actually get it, I think there's going to be so much paperwork to go through. I don't know. I have to, I have to figure out stuff. Yay, sleep. It's just been a lazy day. I think it's because I was outside so much today. And yesterday I was like running around a little bit. Uh, we'll see. So with this match, we have Cody Rhodes sticking on Jimmy Havoc. Starts off a very technical match. It was a sunset flip out of the corner. And then they, then they trade pins for a while. They even shook hands, which is rare with Jimmy Havoc. I was surprised because there was no staple gun. I don't know if he was told no staple gun or if there's only staple guns. I don't know. And then Billy Gunn. Uh, it was Billy Gunn, Sean Spears, uh, the son of Billy Gunn, and a few other people. They would kind of come in and out every so often. They were gambling. I like that. I, I like the, the degenerate gambling, although I can't do that because I gave that up for Lent, too. There's only three more weeks left of Lent, and actually only nine more days left on my suspension. <laughs> That's going to be so good to come back live streaming. I'm going to do a lot more live streaming once I'm off suspension, I think. Making videos, this is, this is rough. But we'll see. There's, there's pros and cons to both. This allows me to show graphics. The others I have to actually have to see the insight of the Hobo Studio. And if something happens, I can always pause this and come back. Live stream. Eh -eh. It's like one take. That's it, folks. So with that, they got the handshake. Then Cody puts on the figure four pretty quickly. A havoc. He's like pulling on the ear, doing the eye poke, doing, doing all those kind of heel things to get out. And then even Kenny Omega. Because then they get, get to the outside. Cody gets tossed against the barricades. And, and he told us they're not really barricades. They're real bike racks with just material over it. So they're all steel. Kenny Omega, you just been wrestling for a whole bunch of people. They thought they were real barricades. I've been telling people, and I've been mentioning it, especially in the Daytona Bum Fight League, you get straight bicycle racks. You steal them from places. Or they wind up on the... Um, but then here, the wrestling, they're wrestling on the stage. A Havoc gets on the commentary. That was good. It's, it's good to see the, the wrestlers integrating what they can around them to make the match feel better. Uh, even if they have, even they have to go on the commentary for a little bit, that's fine. They go back to the ring. And there's some the, the hard stomps. But Cody, Cody does the running Larry from like the ramp. That's getting old. Um, did the toss away suplex. He he tossed the belt and and for some reason when he tosses the belt to his wife Brandy it seems less helpful. However, Jimmy Havoc hit the rainmaker, but nothing happened though, and he just got like a two count. 
And then Cody Rhodes jumped up from that, did two spike crossroads. Like, like Jimmy Havoc knows how to spike himself to the ground. Ouch. Twice. And Cody Rhodes picked up the pin. Yeah, that was a good match. It was a cheeseburger match. Then I think the only bad thing is this like Brandy came in the ring and she gave her husband, her her legit husband, like the biggest aw like friend, like I'm your friend hug I think I've ever seen or ever received. I'm like, uh oh. That's 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 no bueno. She has he has to, he has to grab her butt or something. Just just reach around. And just sneak a little, ooh, a little goose. Goose on the hind would be fine. Brandy just looks absolutely amazing with her belly shirt. And this time, uh, star covered like leather just above the knee dress. Brandy. Too much. And then we have a Jake the Snake promo as he reads by Campfire. Interesting choice. Again, he starts cursing, and you could hear, you knew it was cursing because he would say, Well, that piece of. I couldn't believe that that did this. Whoa! Jake, you can't be cursing on TNT, buddy. Like, this isn't like pay per view WWE anymore. And there was a Darby Allen promo. He made masks out of everyone of the Dark Order. Put them on a table and let the table on fire. And I didn't realize that in Washington they have like trucks with broken windshields and like farmland. I thought there were like tall trees out there. But wrestling. Then we had, so we had Darby Allen taking on Kip Sabian next. Um, it was good chain wrestling to start off the match in the ring. And Kip Sabian can go, so can Darby Allen. And I'll tell you what, now Cody was back on commentary. Kenny took a little break. Cody began to drop every name in wrestling on this show. They know he referred to as uh, Penelope Ford as Baby Doll. Oh, wow. That goes back to the fabulous Freebirds. Darby Allen is. Woo! Thing! And Bill Watts. Oh, if you take a look up on that bookshelf. Oh, wrong, wrong, wrong way. I always forget. There we go. Wait, where is it? Where is it? Oh, there we go. Up there somewhere. I just finished reading the death of WCW, and they and they actually did mention Bill Watts, because Bill Watts had actually had the padding removed from ringside. So if you fell outside, which at the one time was a you, so you couldn't do that anyway, you'd actually hurt yourself. So he mentioned Baby Doll, Sting, and Bill Watts in this segment. Then he also dropped the Gibson leg lock. Whoa. This is getting pretty old. This was pretty cool. It's pretty cool to hear all that stuff. And Tony Schiavone was having a blast with these. Like, wow, you're actually. You, did your daddy teach. Did your, did your daddy teach you that, son? And Cody would respond, yeah, my daddy taught me all that. And I met some of those people. Baby. Especially baby doll with that, that big booby that he had, and Michael P. F. Hayes, the Diggler Jimmy Del Rey, and uh, Bam Bam Terry Gordy. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so when they were uh, wrestling outside the ring for a while, let's get back to the action. Inside the ring, it was pretty good. Outside the ring, again, the poor barricades, because I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. Cuckoo, cuckoo. So the poor barricade gets just destroyed. Thankfully, there's no one in the front row this time. Um, again, the baby doll reference by Penelope before. A baby doll, she is not. Again, she's the distraction there. Then there was the over the top rope cunner by Darby Allen, which really should be his finisher. A forward, eventually, the second time. Kip Sabian went on the ring. I'm just giving me highlights. Uh, Penelope Ford pushed her man out of the way. Darby Allen went, refused to jump on him, refused to jump on her, but actually spun around 90 degrees, 
hit keep, hit, keep Sabian anyway. Got him in the ring, hooked on the Gibson leg lock, or the last supper as he calls it. Pinned him for the one, two, three. Actually, you know, this was actually a pretty good match. Two. I'm going to upgrade that. I'll say, yeah, this is a cheeseburger match. Yeah, cause even uh, so, even this, even Cody says it's just a bike rack. It's not a real barricade. Then we have Jake Hagar taking on Chico Adams. This was a squash match. Um, he tossed the jobber into the corner. Hit a vapor on Chico. Tried, I think he got a punch in, but then it ended with like that spinning sidewalk slam. And the seated, I like the way he's doing this. A seated head and arm choke. Choked out Chico Adams. It was a can of soup. You knew Chico Adams wasn't going to win. I'm just thankful it was short. Made Jake Hagar look strong. John Mossy comes out, drops him with a paradigm shift. However, Jake Hagar kind of no sold that, put him in the ankle lock. Mox swims him out of the wing, then he started to swing that belt. John Mossy then, uh, he, as he heads backstage, cuts a backstage promo. Uh, so that was pretty interesting. Then we have another promo segment. Um, there was a Brody. Well, there was a Brody Lee recap, and there was. Oh yeah, then there was the, the, the now internet famous dinner that Brody Lee had. You do not eat before the father's finished, and no sneezing at the table, because either one he's making fun of Vince McMahon, or two. That guy at the Dark Order has a coronavirus. Who can tell now? The next match was QT Marshall taking on, on Brody Lee. Uh, starts off with a big kick to start the match. Just, just then started to, as QT Marshall got out of the ring to kind of get together. Brody Lee followed him, like just slammed him into the apron. They did the he did the two suplexes, which is pretty quick. And then eventually QT Marshall does get get his Little offense, and he gets the two quick rights by QT Marshall. However, yeah, that's not going to face Brody that, that much. It was a spinning sidewalk slam, and then it was a tease. Uh, oh, yeah, a tease of the sister Abigail into a discus lariat. Eh, it was okay, it was a ham sandwich. Then there was Vanguard Woman. Yes! Gave us an update on Nick Jackson, who was doing like up downs in his surprisingly huge house in Rancho Cucamundo, California. I didn't know you could that make that much money selling wrestling t shirts. Because generally, you don't on the indies all of that pro wrestling team money. Wow, that went into that house, folks. And uh, it did look like a compound. It was like the Rancho Cucamundo compound. I'm probably saying that wrong. But that was pretty, that was amazing. That house. And then in the main event of the evening, we have the return of Triple A. Oh, wow. Because we had, and this was supposed to happen actually at Rio de Reyes. It was, it was supposed to uh, last week. Yeah, last Saturday. It was supposed to be at Ray de Ray. They actually canceled it. It's going to be Sam, Sammy Guevara taking on Kenny Omega for the AAA Mega Chip. I don't think that's the main belt, though. I think that's like the equivalent. Like, I want to say in AAA, they have like their big belt. And then they have. A championship, and this is like the universal and or um, WWE championship. So it's something like that. So oh, I've had too much emotion. So I shall be right back. 
There we go. That's probably a lot better. Yeah. It's having some technical difficulty issues there. I've worn this poor camera out. So Sammy Guevara taking on Kenny Omega for the Triple A uh, Mega Championship. And I know this was, again, supposed to be one of the feature matches. Not the main event, but one of the feature matches for Rey de Reyes. And again, Cody's just like dropping names. Sammy's. He just, well, well, Sammy was in the back of the signs for a while, and then he comes out. Uh, then Dasha was, and then they also showed Dasha in, in the men's dressing room. Dasha, what are you doing in the men's dressing room? W were you betting? Are you taking money for something else? Dasha. Shame on you. That's, hey, she's a grown adult. She can do whatever. Uh, so with this match, you have Sammy Guevara again, Kenny Omega. Um, Sammy sets up pictures and seats on the ringside. One picture is of the captain. And I think from the way Cody explained it, who's obviously a large Star Trek geek. That's the captain for the streaming CBS Star Trek show. I have no idea what it's called. It's not Discovery. It's not, well, it's not Discovery. It's not Enterprise. I wonder if it's Captain Pike. This is like the prequel to the prequel of the prequel. No, yeah, so it's the it's the sequel to the prequel of the prequels. The Star Trek series, I think. That makes no sense, but that's okay. I think the timeline is that this is what happens after Yeah, it's the se the sequel to the prequel that was the prequel for Enterprise. Because there was like Enterprise, I think if I know the timeline right, I want to say it's Enterprise, Discovery, this new one. Then you have... The prequels to Jim's Kirk to James C. Kirk. Then you would have the original five Star Wars movies. Then the next generation shows up, and then in between the next generation, you have Deep Space Nine and Voyager. Then you get the next generation movies. Yeah, it gets complex. I just like things much more linear. Like Star Trek, you have to actually think about stuff. Um, and he had a picture of Andy. Oh, Goody just seemed to be very nonchalant about it. He's like, yep, hey, if Randy's going to poo-poo it, good for her. And and poor Cody, poor Cody just like tossed Tony right on the bus. Because Tony said, well, what happens if Brandy's offended by that? It's like, well, I'd have to defend you, Tony. It's like, oh, thanks. Jackass. Um, so I don't know if, if uh, Sammy's trying to hit on Brandy, because this is like the couple times he's been doing this. But for the most part, that started off pretty amateur. It was the uh, Sammy Gray did the amateur backspin to his pose. Kenny Omega kind of did the same thing. Started to hit, just slap him on the back. Yeah, and it was a very technical match. Uh, it was pretty slow for a while, but then so quick and flippy is Sammy. Sammy is great to watch. Again, so many barricade spots. I mean, those bike racks can only take so much. I know when I was a kid, like, you would see, like, bike racks all over the place with, like, the bars bent. So I know they can't take that much abuse. And some man of better stuff nowadays. Again, because I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. Cuckoo, cuckoo, yeah. Uh, then, then, then Sammy goes to the outside. Then he starts to tongue the picture of Brandy. Oh, Sammy. Sammy, Sammy, Sammy. That's why they have the internet, Sammy. You need to get yourself a woman. And not a married one, either. Um, then he went over to Brandy, and Brandy just slapped the taste out of his mouth. 
good for good for Brandy. But he did turn his back to Kenny Omega. So then Kenny Omega beats him up. There's a flying cross body into the ring. Sammy's like, you know what? Okay, I'm sick of having fun. I'm still going to start work over the arm every time he had a chance to. Or if he had to get out of something, he would bite the hand. And he'd be admonished. One, two, I'm going to disqualify you. Three, come on, let go of the biting. No more biting. Four. Hey, I have I still five. So, so tranquilo there, Aubrey. Oh, I'll hit you up later, sweetie. Oh. Uh, then those chops. Oh, I'll tell you what. The, the, the one good thing about these empty arenas is that those chops reverberate all over the place. Then there's more gambling in the back room because every so often there'd be gambling. Then, of course, once you have gambling and women involved, then there's always going to be a... F doesn't matter. Because you know somewhere involved is a beer, too. You have gambling, women, and beer. Bunch of guy, bunch of board guys. That's just the start of a fight. Doesn't even matter why. Then Sammy, he would try the the triple moons all did not work. Again, this felt like a very New Japanish style match. The way it was very slow, but then built up. And of course, when they got once they got to the second half, it was flippy, flippy, everything. Uh, again, Kenny Omega went for some of the signature moves. Eventually, there's just a bunch of V triggers. Um, Kenny knew he was going after his arm because one time Sammy Guevara tried to do a moonsault onto said arm. He pulled it out of the way. Uh, it looked like once like Sammy landed really awkwardly on, on the knee of Kenny Omega. And there were so many V-triggers. And there was a Spanish fly. Oh, again, probably the greatest looking wrestling move ever. The Spanish, the standing Spanish fly. And then eventually, after a couple more V triggers, Kenny Omega hit the one win angel and he retains his Triple A Mega Championship. And actually, a really good match. This was a surf and turf match. And then at the end, we have a little bit of a bubble, Le Champion. Comes out, cuts a promo. He calls out Matt Hardy. He gets Vanguard 1. Vanguard 1 knows that it's coronavirus season, and Vanguard wants nothing to do with Jericho. So Jericho... <laughs> you dumbass, get over here. I mean, Jericho promised Vanguard with everything. He would be he'd be running on the bubble. He would have the, the best propellers. He'd be running on the bubble. But no, he, he's a dumbass. Okay, Jericho is so great. Again, the only thing that could have been better was the pumpkin-headed dipshit. That was funny, though. Then Matt Hardy produces himself in his new vessel. And he has the powers of teleportation in the most cheesy way. Yes, 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 yes. Cheesy effects are the best effects. Um, then they got into a chanting war. It's like, inner circle or elite. And he just goes, delete. Inner circle or elite, delete. Inner circle or elite, delete. Elite, delete, elite, delete, elite, delete. Almost like the best 408 chant ever. Delete, too sweet, obsolete, suck it. Best 408 chant ever. That was in a match of fruit. That was utterly amazing. Um, and then, of course, Jericho's like, enough of this garbage. Slaps Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy slaps him back. Oh, knocks Le Champion to the ground. However, Chris Jericho has some magic of his own. Hocus Pocus, Sammy Guevara jumps. Uh, Matt Hardy from behind. Again, because Cody Rhodes and Kenny Omega's there. They come down from the booth. Jericho and Sammy Guevara get out of there. But once they get up to the stage, they forgot to realize that Matt Hardy had power. He had the magical button that ignited the pyro. Should have known he had the magical button to use the pyro. Because every time they got close to one of them, <laughs> flame went up. They, ah! I'd probably say that too. What the hell? That wasn't supposed to happen. Growing around the other one. Ah! Ah! Fire! Fire all over the place. I'm surprised they didn't set off the sparklers. Again, this was another really fun AEW show. AEW is learning how to do these, these shows right.
Oh, yep, that is for my notes. That was AEW. So, again, there's only going to be one more show this week. That's going to be Friday night. It'll just be Friday night SmackDown. We'll see what happens there. I'm not holding hopes or anything. Um, then, yep, next week will be next week, and we'll see what happens. So, again, I hope everyone's staying well. Um, don't be like me, because I'm going to go hobo, because it's my hour to do that. Because there is, because Daytona is still a free city. And Daytona Beach. And, again, it was funny, because when I went grocery shopping yesterday to go help my friend out, it, this weird stuff's missing. Like, they have no cheap bread, very expensive bread. All the expensive cereal is gone, but, like, the cheap bags of cereal is still there. They had rolls of ground beef, but no packages. It, it's, it's it's no no rhyme or reason to it. And the toilet paper showed up, and, like, there are still cases of water there. I don't know. So I hope everyone else is staying well. Again, take care of yourselves during this coronavirus. I do appreciate the fact that, well, a bunch of people probably now have a lot of free time to watch this guy, Hobo Tom.